Welcome back to my channel where I'm building a Rans S21 plane. Um, it's been about a month and a half since I put out a video. Uh, my build time over the last four months has probably been averaging about 20 hours a month, which is far less than I had anticipated and planned on, but life got busy. I hope to pick up the build time after the new year and get back into some serious building. Uh, but I'm enjoying the journey, enjoying the build, and the last couple of months I just haven't gotten a lot of time in. Um, I want to double stress that these are not instructional videos. The manual gets pretty thin through this section, and all they do is provide you diagrams and you have to figure it out for yourself. I did spend a lot of time looking at the diagrams, watching some other builder videos, as well as looking at EAA builder logs, and then making some decisions the way I planned on doing it. So this video represents the way I did it. Uh, I'm a first time builder. This is clearly not instructional. This is just the way that I built the plane. And if you get some tips out of it, great. Um, in this video, I cleaned up a lot of the wiring and ran a lot of the wires and started with the closeout sections um, uh, for the interior. So with that, let's, uh, let's jump into it and get building. Okay, what I did is I bundled and loomed the wires. Uh, I first put uh, the antenna wires in one loom and separated them from all my other wires going up. And then this is the main power wire from the battery, so I kept that separate. I think keeping the antenna wire isolated and separate might help keep the interference from currents going through these. So, and besides they fit in the looms better. So then I, I hung the looms using some C clamps, ran the looms back, and then I've still got to figure out the wiring that comes along to the console. And, and my understanding there's a finish piece here that comes down, so I got to figure out how that comes into play. But I think as far as going up to the front, the looms will work fine and then they go up underneath this is one that's got to get tucked up I haven't done that one yet but that's got to get tucked up and then they go up and go through that shelf up to the panel in uh, working on our wiring there's a unit back here the GEA 24 which is kind of a controller I did get one harness coming out and I bundled the wires uh, it's for two wires are for the fuel quantity, of which we've got sight gauges and a low light, so there is no fuel monitoring on this. And then there's flat position, aileron position, and elevator position. So I guess these are all kind of indicators of which uh, I'm not hooking any of that up. Um, the flaps are just the old style handle flaps. You know, you're pretty obvious to what position you're going to be in. Uh, and nothing else really has position sensoring. So this whole harness, I'm going to take this whole harness out. I hang on to it. Uh, you never know. I may need it, may regret that decision, uh, but that's what I'm doing now. Okay, uh, I did hear back from my panel company. Uh, I had several questions on some of these wires that I weren't sure what they hooked up to. Uh, the pitch trim motor and roll trim motor are for an auto trim function, uh, different than the trim function in the yoke or in the stick. Um, uh, I don't even have a roll trim servo, uh, so those are not needed. If you're not going to use the auto trim function, they're not needed. And that goes with the same as the uh, roll trim switch, pitch trim switch. These are switches for the auto trim function, so those are not necessary. The music in wire is an option that you can uh, uh, pl have plugs for music in. I'm not going to use that either. And the last wire was the... Um, GMA something dim switch and that goes into the uh, dim controller uh, as part of the dim. That gives you the flexibility on the, the uh, dimmer to dim the lights on the radios. So that I will use and I'll put into that controller. So some miscellaneous wires, I was kind of stumped on where to go with them. I uh, don't know if you're going to run into the same thing, but that's the answer from the panel company and that'll let me to move forward to finish organizing uh, these wires. Uh, the next thing in running my wires is to hook up the power to the ELT. There's a 232 cord that goes to the G3 for GPS coordinates, but they also need a power and a ground. So the ground I've just run to the bus that's here. The power I've sent through the loom 
and it comes out here. Here's my power wire for the ALT. I am going to put another one amp breaker in here. Um, this this one down here is got is loaded up with some different things, so I'm going to put another one amp in here to run the ELT. And okay, I uh, I installed a one amp breaker uh, at the end of this row. Uh, I put it in here, and then I ran the power wire, uh, which is the top wire down here, which turns on when the master turns on. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It turns on when the avionics turns on. And then here's my power wire going to the ALT. Uh, part of the work that I'm doing is to create anti-chafing on the wires wherever I can. And these are the wires that come out of the base of the control stick. I had a friend from EAA that said they used to put heat shrink around it first, and then they would pro-seal it if they couldn't get a grommet in there, which I could not. So I've tried that. I've heat shrinked it. And then I put some Pro Seal all around it, pushed it in underneath so it would kind of grab the stick, and we'll see how that dries. Uh, part of the anti chafing work is this is where I've got some cables coming through the uh, avionics shelf. Even though it's got some loom, I did put uh, some edging. I've super glued some rubber edging in there to create an extra layer of anti chafing. Okay, this is me. Closing the text manual, as there is no text for the closeout, so we don't need the text manual anymore. This is me looking at the parts manual, recognizing that all I have is diagrams and parts numbers to figure this out. And what I've been told is to make sure you read ahead, because some of these parts have to go in before some of these parts. I think uh, Steve from Clear Direct said it best uh, when Randy wrote the manuals. He basically said, if you can't figure it out from a diagram at this point in the build, you probably should stop building. So Steve, I give you credit for that. That was a great line. And with that, let's start figuring out where all these pieces go. In starting to do my interior closeout, the first thing I did was just take all my closeout parts and start laying them in where it looks like they go. After working on the plane for so long, you get a feel of where things are supposed to go. Um, at, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stay with the blue on the parts. I was practicing my spray technique and it didn't come out that well. Um, uh, so I may cover it in fabric. Uh, I'm definitely covering the, uh, the aft baggage section with fabric and I'll get that started next. This piece isn't all the way down because I've got some wires. I've got to fi finish figuring out how to run the wires underneath. Then if you come over to the manual, hey Hunter, you've got a, a parts diagram piece on the closeout that starts on 10I0708 and then it goes on for about three or four more pages. But with that, I'm just going to start, I'm going to cover this first, get that started, then get these pieces working going forward. And looking at my gas line hose that leads up to the firewall, it's supposed to come off straight, kind of bend down, then have the 45 up here. In my installation, whoops, I put this back on. I had the hose on backwards. I had the 45 here. I just changed it. I had the 45 here. This is supposed to be the straight connection. Then it kind of dips down. And then the 45 degree angle goes up to the firewall. So I changed that around. This uh, cover was not going to fit the way it was installed originally. Okay, the, the next step in this closeout is I'm going to take pages 10I09 and also reference 10I07. But it looks like these, these forward sections need to get mated together. And then they're going to go into this uh, piece that covers the, the stick. Uh, and then in this diagram, they kind of show that piece going across. Um, but if I come over here and lay the parts out, I've just laid this one out on the left side. It's over the, the fuel valve, which I have to cut a hole for. And that piece is going to kind of rest in there. This one I've kind of fit together a little better. Uh, I actually had to cut a little section up here because my, my co uh, cable runs don't quite clear to the end, so I cut a little section out of here. And then there's some overlap. You have to choose whether you're gonna go on top or below it. This fits kind of snug up here, so I'm gonna put it underneath. 
and then it rests on this flap and then it looks like this sits on the outside this gets riveted apparently they say this gets riveted which means if you want to take it out the whole piece has to come out I'm tempted to put nut screws down here so that I can separate it and take this out separately and then take this out separately but we'll we'll see when we get there so I need to uh, prime and paint this I need to get the holes drilled to match drill here holes drilled along here and that'll set these together uh, I think I've got this in well uh, so this piece whoops this piece is going to go around this cage frame down here you've got two rivets up here a string of rivets that'll go in here I, I I left this blank because this is where my cables are behind here and I don't want to drill in and have a a rivet head rubbing against any of the cables so even though there's four rivets I've got one two three four with this gap here and then these use a larger AVEX rivet down here and I've got this flush and I've got this locked in so I think I think and then this whole piece apparently can come out as one unit even when the boots on the whole thing will slide up and the whole piece can be removed um, so that's good so I think I've got this right I've got again I've got to prime and paint that Okay, I've got my piece out. I finished drilling the holes. It looks like I've got a stiffener here that tucks up underneath, and these look like they're the five holes. Stiffener over here along the edge, and then a stiffener on this flap here. As I come over here, they're showing a bar here, and I'm assuming that's the stiffener, number 14, and then one up here and one down here. So on my, my uh, uh, finishing piece it looks like I'm gonna have one here one here and then one back here so I'll go ahead and install those that's uh, I've zoomed up on it and that's the best I can make as far as the placement of the stiffeners I've got the stringer supports in as I believe the diagram is indicating using the 332nd smaller rivets I've got a line of rivets up top and one down each side. I laid the closeout piece in uh, so I can fit the boot and trim it. And I noticed that the pulley and the uh, aileron cable are right near the front of this. So I've moved it all the way forward. So the cage frame is on this back frame. So it's pushed all the way forward this way. And as I look under here, I don't like the way that stringer is so close to the uh, cable. Uh, you know, if it's just a little bit loose, it's going to catch that cable. I don't know if you can see it in this video. So I'm going to trim this stringer in here. I'm going to trim it flush so that that cable doesn't have a chance of interfering with it. I was installing the second side, and I remembered you've got to get around this valve. So you've just got to fit this in and move it around. I had to trim a little down here had to trim a little up in here to get through these cables had to trim a little away from this brake line so it's just a matter of trimming and fitting it in and it does call for rivets which means this if you need to take it out the whole piece has to come out uh, one of the closeouts is this uh, rudder cable cover that goes on and i had not hooked up the top cable to the rudders so i did attach them i put them in the furthest hole away so that they would be the loosest so that when I hook up my rudder, I might have to adjust them forward a little bit, but I do have them hooked up for positioning that cover and getting that closeout done. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good place to end the video and keep them somewhat short. Uh, that section took 35.6 hours of build time. That brings my build to date to 963 hours. Um, in the next video, I continue with some of the closeout and move closer to getting the engine mounted, which is, of course is a big milestone. So with that, I hope you picked up a few tips. Thanks for watching, and remember, dream it and just build it.